What is going on guys? It's Real Touch GML here back with another Java tutorial. This is going to be our 10th episode and today we're going to be doing something pretty exciting. We are going to be getting into creating our camera for our platformer game. So if I go ahead and run it now, as you can see, you know, we got this nice little, uh, you know, collision uh, box guy that, and it really kind of is a platformer at this point, you know, it's a game that we can actually, you know, run around with and, and all that fun stuff. But what fun is it if we have just our screen that we have now limiting our actual uh, level design? You know, we want to have these huge, nice levels, so that's why we need a camera in the game. All right, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So I went ahead and with the level, I just, you know, this create level method, I went ahead and just extended out our platform that we. Um, that we that we uh, walk on so it'll go out uh, our game with multiplied by two so we can actually you know move throughout the the level here uh, so let's go ahead and begin so what I'm gonna do right off the bat is in our I guess we could say let's put it in our window let's create a class called camera and this class is going to be pretty self-explanatory um, it's our camera class so we're going to extend game up actually you know what I don't think I want this as a game object so let's just create two variables private float X and Y and let's create a constructor float X float Y this dot X equals X this dot Y equals Y now the reason I don't want it a game object is because one we're not gonna have multitudes of this and we're never gonna be deleting or creating well we're going to be creating our camera we're never going to be deleting it and messing with its state and everything so there's just really um, no point in making it a game object so now what we're going to want to do also is create getters and setters so public actually you know what oh yeah we do so let's create public float get x return x public float get y and it returns y actually I don't think we need setters but uh, we might as well just put them just in case we do so public void set x float x this dot x equals x public void set y float y this dot y equals y alrighty so there we go we have our basic um, camera class so let's go into our game class here and just initialize it. So camera cam. Alright. And in our init method here, let's just go ahead and say cam equals new camera. And here we just say zero zero. So the starting coordinates of our camera is gonna be zero zero. And in our tick method, we're gonna go ahead and run something cam.tick and we haven't actually created this yet but we're going to create it right here so public void tick and that's going to actually take a parameter game object player because we're going to need the player to able to be able to, for the camera to snap onto it and so that means for our cam.tick we're going to need to put this into a for loop int i equals zero i is less than handler dot object dot size i plus plus and we say if handler dot object dot get i dot get id equals um, object object id dot player then what we're going to do is tick There we go. And inside of here, we're actually going to take this and plop it into here. Actually, right there. And not get ID, just get I. So that's going to be the object that we actually pass in the parameter there. So now, since it's looping through this entire thing and there's only one player, when it hits that player, it's going to actually tick it with the proper core, uh, proper object that we want. So now you might be asking yourself, how do we actually get our game to follow camera coordinates? 
right? So, or, or like have the actual camera function enabled. And how we're gonna do that is first off, we're gonna need to use graphics 2D. So we're gonna cast our graphics G variable into a graphics 2D simply by doing graphics 2D G 2D equals graphics 2D G. Control Shift O to import graphics 2D. And this graphics 2D here has a function called translate. And if we go ahead and say G 2D translate cam.getx, cam.gety, it's now going to translate everything that it sandwiches. So if we copy this and paste it down here, and that's, let's actually take this and put it right here. And instead of, uh, instead of cam, now we just put negative at the end. So here we have our begin of cam, and here we have the end of cam. So anything in between this and this is going to be affected by the camera, which is our handler.render. So all of our objects are going to be affected. So what we can do in here now is say, um, well here, let's just say x minus minus, and I'll show you real quick. So we go and run it. As you can see, it appears as everything is going to the right. And not everything is shifting to the, or the camera's going to the right, not everything is shifting to the left. We're actually physically moving our camera to the right, which is pretty cool. All right. So now what we need to do is just snap that to the, uh, to the player. So I'm gonna use an algorithm here called tweening. And this is basically going to, well, all right, let me save that for another episode because I might actually, it's gonna take a little bit to actually go into all of the stuff. And I actually did just make a video on it. Um, the link is popping up right now. Go and check that out. It is Game Maker, but it shows the algorithm and you can easily translate it into this tick method right here. All right, so right here, I'm just gonna say X equals um, player dot get X minus game dot width divided by two. I think that should be good. No, oh, it actually has to be negative. Okay, so now that's working. And then we need to say minus, uh, do, 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 or the plus. Okay, yeah, there we go. So now we have our actual player and a camera getting snapped to, uh, or a camera snapping to our player, which is pretty awesome. So go and leave a like, go and subscribe. Let's try for 50 likes this time. And uh, I will, of course, see you guys in the next episode. Peace.